Okay, today's video is gonna be really, really fun because I'm gonna show you what the most common problem is we have with tapes that get sent into the studio. Uh, for those of you that follow us know what we do, but if you don't, what we the, the company audio mover we take old audio and video tapes people send them into the studio and we convert them to digital we don't do this kind of tape because this is copyrighted but when i found this tape at, at a store i noticed that it had this one specific problem and i wanted to share it with you so you could see what the most common thing we deal with is when things get sent into the studio and if you still own cassette tapes you might have even seen this in some of your tapes or maybe didn't notice that this had happened to your tapes so this is this is two of a kind i gotta be honest with you i didn't know <laughs> i really didn't know anything about this i don't even remember it coming out but this is a movie from 1983 obviously with john travolta and olivia newton john they must have been trying to see if they could hit that magic again because what was it this was 83 i think it was 77 78 when greece came out and it was these two and that was of course huge you know and they i mean the, and the two of them just had that i don't know that that magic together and so olivia newton john and she it's amazing she even though she was such a famous singer she really was in a lot of movies over the years so she'd been in greece and then before this one she was in another movie called Xanadu, which I actually, I hate to admit it, but I kind of liked it. It was mostly music, but Jeff Lynn, ELO, had done a bunch of the music. The song Xanadu was awesome. And then she had a, 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 the song Magic, you have to believe we are magic. It was so great. Anyway, that was on there. And then, and then 1983, a few years later, the two of them did this movie together. And I'm gonna show you the problem, and I'm gonna show you the easy way to fix it, and I'm gonna show you the hard way to fix it. Okay, so let me open it up, and I'll show you what the issue is with this tape. Actually, there's a few really interesting things about this tape. Oh, by the way, let's look at the inside. There's an <laughs> another picture. So that kinda almost doesn't even look like her, in a way. How interesting. And the other songs on here, I'd never heard of this. I didn't even, I, we bought this at a, I think it was at Wax Tracks last time I was in town and I saw it and just thought this would be an interesting one to talk about. But the, on the soundtrack, they had, uh, on side two here, they had Ask the Lonely, pretty famous Journey song, uh, Prima Donna by Chicago, I don't know that song, and a bunch of Olivia uh, Newton-John songs and, John Travolta, I guess they were both singing. I didn't see it. So I know little, very little about this at all. Okay, back to the tape. First thing you're gonna notice, which is so interesting, this tape, of course, used to be white. Hey, hold on for just a second, we'll get right back to the video. But if you like this stuff, please like the video, subscribe to the channel, leave any comments. We'd, we'd love to hear from you and we really, really appreciate it. Anyway, with that, back to the video. And you've probably seen things like this before with tape, different polymers of, ta of uh, not tape, plastic turn yellow over time. And as they get yellow, they get a little more brittle. But anyway, this is a great example of a tape that, that just got, I, I doubt it was this color when it was made. It was probably more like the color of those reels. And I don't know this for sure, but we get so many tapes in here that have, that have turned yellow. Matter of fact, we have another video I think that's on our channel where we have two tapes that were stored side by side, one on top of the other that were the, the just part one, part two of a series. And one of them, when you lifted the other one off, was white while the other one was brown. And it's it's just, they degrade. And that one particularly was, call, it's called photo degradation. It's the just light getting onto it over time just changes it. So anyway, the, you've you've but you've probably seen that before tape that the, or plastic that turns a different color. Now, the issue that I'm going to show you is something that's called the pressure pad. Now, right here, I have a pressure pad for you to look at. This is a critical critical part of a cassette tape playing correctly, and I'll show you where it is in this tape here. The pressure pad sits right there. Now this blue that you see, this is what's called leader tape. You can't record on leader tape. Leader tape is basically, it just attaches the oxide, the brown tape, and to this, and then this is what attaches to the, to the reel. Now right underneath here though, in the middle, look right there and you'll see this piece of copper and you'll see the similarity between that and this. 
Now the difference is obviously that, that this one that I'm holding has that little piece of felt and that one has residue from some sort of glue or adhesive where that felt used to be. Now, whenever we see this happen, first of all, by the way, the tape won't play or sound good. It won't play as well if that's missing. The purpose that it serves is that when you push play on a, on the, a tape player, the tape goes across the, that in the head in the tape player. It's not, these are tweezers, but it looks kind of like, it, it's shaped kind of like that when you push play goes up and pushes against the tape which is running in between the two and that little this little mount here because it gives and it because it has that little piece of kind of felt fabric that gives it a nice solid connection so that as the tape goes by it has a good connection with the playhead and that's how you get a good sound if that falls off which it does a lot and as i said this is the most common problem we have with tapes that come into the studio. And it's the first thing we check. We take a tape out of a case and we look in it and you'll see that it's missing. Now, there's two things that usually happen. And as I said, and this is pretty common for tapes that were manufactured by record companies because they're just, they were always made just kind of cheap. But, but we get a lot of tapes, because like I said, we don't do this kind of tape because it's copyrighted. But we get tapes shipped in from all over the country, from churches, government agencies, people, whatever. And it, it, that's, again, similarly the most common problem. And then what we do, we check that very first, and then there's usually one of two places. It, it'll fall off and you'll find it. A lot of times it'll just be sitting right in there. You'll just see the little thing in there. Or you'll see it, and it's that's what happened in this case. You'll see that it actually fell down behind the mount, you can actually see it down flopping around in there. It just fell off and it's just sitting down there. So I'm going to try to grab it and see if we can pull it out to, there we go. There it is. That's the pressure pad and it's supposed to be right there. And it fell out. And now the easy way to deal with this is just to glue it back on and I'll show you how to do that. It's pretty simple. And we've had projects before where these come in like a church will send us a box full of tapes and there'll maybe be 200 tapes in this particular box. And we open up the box, take the tapes out and the bottom of the box is just filled with these things. Because this is so normal, adhesive just over time, it just breaks down and it just won't last forever. And eventually these things just fall off. And so the easiest thing to do, and we'll just use something like this, just basic glue, this one's wood glue, but just, grab some Elmer's glue or something. And then what we'll do is we'll just take a little dab of it. Actually, let me, oh yeah, I've already got the tape moved out of, out of the way. We'll just take a little dab of it, like so. We'll move that, get the leader tape out of the way. And then we'll just put that little dab of glue right there. And then we'll just take the same pa pressure pad, like that. and just drop it on there. That's all there is to it. And then we'll just, we'll just let it sit for, you know, an hour or two or whatever, just to let it get seated so that it doesn't, because what you don't want to have happen is have any of that glue drip off onto the you know, the playhead or something like that. So you just let it sit for a while till, you, till it has a nice secure connection. Now, the other thing I told you I was going to do is show you the hard way to do it. The nice thing about these pressure pads is that they're about 99% universal. So if you, so I'll just give you a, a, a couple of scenarios here. If you didn't have that pad, you have a, a choice. You can go find another tape and just tear it off like this one here we scavenge this from another tape and you can actually pull that that off if you you know and mess if you if you you know get a razor blade under there or something and then glue it on that's one one way you could handle this or you could take just this whole little mechanism and just take this tape apart and put that inside and that's what I'm going to show you how to do but there's a problem with this tape, and this is why I said a couple of scenarios, because 
the, the first scenario is what's fairly common here in the studio. We'll get a tape like this that'll come in. Somebody will send us something in. This has a recording of grandpa or grandma playing piano or a church service or something like that. And you'll notice that in this case, there are one, two, three, four, five screws in this tape. And it's really a simple matter of just removing those screws, lifting this off, and then you could take this pressure pad and put it in place. You can see that this one has one right there. And they're basically, like I said, for all intents and purposes, universal. There are a few exceptions, but for the most part, any, any one of these, no matter the manufacturer or whatever, will just fit in any tape. They were very, very standard, standardized that way. But in this case, as with a lot of tapes that were manufactured by a record company, there are no screws holding it together. They have the whole thing just sealed shut like that. You can see that it's, and you can see the seam that goes along the top and the sides, but you, there's no other way to get into it. And what happens sometimes, and I'll give you again a couple of scenarios, if we have to replace the pressure pad, the only way to get in there to, to, if you wanted to do the whole thing like this, is you got to break it open. The other thing that happens sometimes that require you to break it open is this leader tape, which you're watching right there, you can see it kind of moving. Eventually, it's going to turn brown and it's going to get to the actual oxide tape. Should, there it is right there. And there's the, there's the I think it's, it's ferric oxide, I think is what this one would be made out of. So, and you'll see that it's got, it's attached right there. The two things are stuck together and it's attached with a piece of adhesive and you can actually see through the, the clear blue leader tape right there, the adhesive on that side, but I'm gonna pull it a little further so you can see the whole thing. You can see the adhesive right there. If you flip it over, you can see the adhesive spanning that whole thing. And there's the, the side, this is the side that the playhead touches. And then this is the side and that really is just it's not all that different than like a piece of scotch tape when these things were manufactured they would just tape the leader to the to the oxide tape and then the leader then attaches to the to the reel and it was just a little the the leader is just a little bit more robust it's easier to to manage and it won't break as easily and it's easier because it won't break as easily to attach that to a reel and so that's what they would do so what I'm going to show you how to do is let's just say that you wanted to put a whole new mount in there because sometimes the other thing that happens is these things will get bent in there, they'll get twisted and who knows why. I mean, we see so much crazy stuff here. And you just need to say, you know what, we need to put the whole, a whole new thing in there. And then you think, how am I going to do this? We've got to break it open. Well, and I have no idea what's going to happen as we do this. We, we have all kinds of, I, I never know, because we, we, we've broken open tapes many, many times before. Sometimes the whole thing just gets utterly destroyed, and other times it comes apart fairly easily. Now, the nice thing about cassette tapes is that because so many pieces of this were universal, even if the housing, the, the shell gets destroyed, which it could, it might as we do this, you can literally take those two reels, take them out and put them in there and it'll work fine. So these things were, were very, uh, they're universal in that way. So if you have to crack it open, even if you have to destroy the whole thing in the process, because sometimes you do, it's, you never know what's gonna happen with these seams, then you, uh, then you, all you have to do. Matter of fact, I have a funny story. Years ago, probably back in, because we've had this business now for about 25 years or so. This would have been around 2004, 2005. We were still running the business out of my house back in Colorado. And we had a, a number 10 envelope, if you can imagine, just a you know regular white envelope with a tape stuck inside. Somebody licked it, put a stamp on it, and sent it to us. And when it arrived at the studio, it, we, op we, we, grabbed, we got this envelope, and you could hear just pieces rustling around in there. And when we opened up this envelope, it looked like it had been run over by a truck. I mean, they were just, it was just crushed. <laughs> pieces of cassette tape all over in there. Well, the nice thing about that 
is that the tape, the oxide tape itself, was still intact. I mean, it was, it was still on the reel, sort of. We had to spool it up a little bit. But it was basically like, take the wheel out, blow the broken plastic pieces off, stick a new thing in, and you never knew the difference. It sounded fine, worked great. So, so you want it, 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 we do try to salvage these things and we do try to break it in such a way because we do get this a lot where, where tapes are broken and it's pulled back inside and we have to open them up. Uh, but we try, we try to do it in such a way that it, we can salvage the, all the parts and pieces and not have to put it in a new housing. But if we can't, what we'll do is we'll just take the old shell, it, we'll put the tape in a new shell like this, and we'll just tape them together. Most people are never going to listen to the tape again anyway. They're sending it to us to do it the one time, and then, you know, then, I don't know, then they just keep it just for, for the fun of it, I suppose, just to have it. But uh, you'll know what's what. We'll just send it back to you and it'll look something like this where you'll have the tape rubber banded to the one and you'll know what went with what. And we'll, we'll, we mark it up and everything. You know exactly what's going on when you get it back. Anyway, but, but sometimes we have to do this. And we don't have to in this case, obviously, but I thought it'd be fun just to kind of show you what it's like when we do have to do that. So we're going to basically take that one out, act like it is still broken or something's wrong and then we're just going to take this one and put it in you'll see how how universal this is and how this works now <clears throat> the way the way to start doing this is you you start by seeing if we can just get it to crack a little bit uh this one's good just to get the seams to oh whoa 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 <laughs> now you remember you notice when i told you that this was yellow that it was yellowing the reason that's doing that, when, when plastic starts yellowing, it gets brittle. And so a lot of times what we do is do that, we'll bend it just a little bit to crack it to see if we can get the seam to crack. Because if we can get the seam to crack, then it's pretty easy to take a screwdriver, put it in there and move it around the edges and it'll pop open. I was not putting much pressure on that and it just flew. Now, again, why did it do that? Because when, when something goes through this, I think it's called photodegradation, even when it's it, it, where, the, where the polymer is turning yellow like this, not only does it turn yellow, but it becomes very brittle. And I bet, I, I, probably without too much trouble, I could crush this whole thing. It'll still play fine, even with that piece missing. I don't know if we need, even need to find it, because we're, we're never going to play this tape again. But this will, but but that happens. The older these tapes get, and the more yellow they get, not only do they get yellow, but they get brittle. So normally, what we do, we'll turn it a little bit like that to try to crack the seams. But you could hear this thing's ready to just fall apart anyway. So the way we normally would do this is we we utilize these right protect holes to to our advantage. Now, most uh, audio tape. If you were just to buy it at the store, like like this one, for example, you'll notice that there's actually tabs right there. And in the one we bought from the store, there's no tab there. So there's a tab in the one that we have here in the studio. This is just one of our t test tone tapes that we use for uh, just getting our, making sure our tape decks are running at the right speed. If I were to pop that out, that would make it so you couldn't record on it. So these are, it's a record protect tab. So, uh, so what happens is in a tape deck, for example, if you were putting this tape in a tape deck, as it's going, as you put it, you slide it into the thing, and as it's going up, actually, I guess it'd be on this side. You slide it in, and you, as you push it up, there's a little button that goes right there, kind of sits like that. And when it's when it won't when it's sitting in that position, it won't or it will allow you to hit record and record over this tape. If it has that hole, and you put the tape in, that button pops down in that little hole like so, and that then disables the record button. So the reason that these come when you buy them without that these tabs in there, where this one has the tab, this one you could record on, this one you can't. And you could actually overwrite it by putting a piece of tape, scotch tape or something, over those holes, and then it would. Then you could record over it. So then, what we would normally do after we crack the shell a little bit, boy, yeah, this one's just ready to fall to pieces. 
is we would normally take a screwdriver or something and put it in place right in there and you can see boy look at that how it just falls apart now normally and I'm not being super careful here uh, once we start getting inside the tape we don't want to use a screwdriver that has any magnetism in it because because the the uh, the the oxide tape is magnetic if you get a magnet too close to it it can potentially damage the audio these are very very weak magnets but still uh, in this case also because the tape is on that side most of the work we're going to try to do is over here but we also have the leader tape is everywhere so even when we're running the screwdriver down in here and here trying to open it up it's only the leader tape that could potentially get damaged which really isn't a big deal so now we're going to try this one's this one's like i said this is so brittle we may not be able to salvage this case anyway because it's so brittle but yeah look at that look how it just kind of <laughs> wow okay we're going to try to break that seal okay we got the seal kind of broken on that side i don't see them like this very often this one is uh this one's in pretty rough shape Okay, now we're going to come down this other side. This is the side that has the tape, so we're going to be a little, a little careful on this side. But you'll see that the seam's kind of already broken right there. So we're going to go push down there. Whoa, look at that. It just came right apart, just like that. Now I'm going to lift that open, and there you go. There's our tape. And the whole thing. And that's what it looks like on the inside of a two-of-a-kind cassette tape. Now I'll show you what we do here, how we would replace these things. And and believe it or not, even though it's all beat up, it'll still play fine. It's just missing a couple little. It it, it will it will play like that. Uh, so there's really no need to put it in new housing. But I'll show you a couple interesting things in here. This right here, this kind of gasket sheet. I think it, this, people have told me it's called a slip sheet, but it's this little gasket type thing that sits. And, and it kind of just sits in that spot. All cassette tapes are going to have something like this sitting in there. And this serves a couple of purposes. It's very, uh, there's not very much friction. You can see that the, the wheel, the reel, has been rubbing up against there. But it keeps it from rubbing against the plastic. Secondly, you'll see that it has kind of a dimple going across right there and right there. And the purpose of that is to keep make sure that this with by putting just the because it ha, you can see the dimples on that side too because there's one on each each side of the shell it's to keep the tape it's to put just a tiny tiny little bit of pressure on each side again very little friction and it makes the tape spool up as smoothly as possible not perfect as you can see but it keeps it from coming off the reel you know, keeping it as tight on the reel as, it, as you possibly can. And then what we would do in this case, boy, yeah, this thing is a, you'll also see that there's a wheel right there. These things spin freely and a wheel, this one fell out of place. This would be an interesting thing to show you too. You see there's a little hole right there. Let me move this out of the way. You'll see there's a little, little tiny hole right there. And there's a metal post that's on that reel, and that metal post kind of sits down in that spot. Now, whenever you do this stuff, oh yeah, that actually broke as we were opening it too. So that may we may not be able to. This may or may not go back together because that post then has to match up with that hole right there too when we put the shell back on, and that can be a little challenging, especially if it's a little bit broken. But we'll try. And again, it's no big deal because this this case, this shell is such a mess, and no one's ever going to play this tape again. We're doing this just to kind of show you how this all works. So, what I'm going to do now is get that leader tape kind of spooled up nice and tight on this side, so it's not flipping or flopping around everywhere. And then I'll show you how what we would do. Okay, so now here's the pressure pad that I was showing you from the outside. And you'll notice as I pull it out, that's the one that we that's the one that we put the glue on right there, and then here's the one that I showed you that we'd taken out of another tape. And you'll see that they're, for all intents and purposes, the same. Now, where'd this come from? Well, we actually have 
some of our clients, uh, people send things in, like I said, from all over the country, and we get them in from churches, government agencies. That's some of our bigger, I mean, we get some big clients, especially those where they'll send literally thousands of tapes in. And a lot of them just tell us, hey, don't send the tapes back once you're done. We don't need them. We just want the files, and then they do whatever they do with the files. We make MP3 files or waves or whatever. And, and then they ask if we can just dispose of them, which we're like, of course we can. And then we also say, and what we'll do is we'll scavenge pieces out of your old tapes before we throw them away. And then people like you, if you send in a tape that has a problem, then we have the old parts and pieces to repair it because we've scavenged them from other projects that we did you know, a long time earlier. So we actually kind of recycle a little bit in the studio by by taking pieces and, and sharing them from, from project to project. So anyway, that's, it, but I mean, it's, we never, not the audio tape, that always gets either destroyed or, uh, but by the way, if you ever send tapes in to us, we always send them back unless you tell us not to send them back. Then we'll, then we'll dispose of them, like I said, and take the, the, the important pieces, especially this, because this is the most common thing that happens with tapes. Most, if we ever have a problem with a cassette tape that comes into the studio, it's usually this. It's the pressure pad. So I, even though I glued that one on, I'll show you, this is the other one that we had scavenged from another tape, and we're just gonna set this one in, and you'll see, there you go. Identical, works exactly the same. And that's all there is to it. Right behind it, you'll see there's this, this is kind of maybe kind of interesting, there's this little piece of metal and what that is, is that's a little magnetic shield in almost every tape you ever buy that's sitting right there. And th kind of the idea behind it is, like I said with the screwdrivers, like if you have a magnetized screwdriver, you don't want it be touching it all over the tape. Whenever you're playing or recording onto a tape, the head, there's a little magnetic field that's being generated right in this spot. And especially when you're recording over a tape, there's a there's actually a thing called an erase head that sits right next to it that actually erases the tape as it records onto it. And it generates this little magnetic field, and this is kind of a shield that keeps all the tape, you know, right up there in front of it from potentially getting damaged by what's happening right there. Anyway, so they always have that little piece of metal right there. Okay, so now we've replaced the pressure pad. We've put that wheel back in place. That one concerns me a little bit because there, it, the plastic underneath it is broken and it's probably not going to sit very smoothly. We'll, we'll see. And if it won't close, then I will simply show you how we put it in another housing. And then that'll be one of those videos. So now we're going to take this, we're going to run it around. The path is it goes around that post. There's a post over there that it goes around to. This gets sometimes gets a little maddening, getting everything to set in the right spot. So this thing is gonna go around that post right there. It's gonna go around that post, around that wheel, around that post, around that wheel. The challenging thing, again, is gonna be because that piece of plastic broke underneath the post on that side, it's gonna be a little hard getting it lined up, but it might work fine. Just make sure it's nice and straight as we put it back together. So that's that's it. We have a new pressure pad in place. The as we put this back on, usually the gasket just kind of almost vacuum seals it. There's no adhesive holding it. It just sits there. And we're going to just try to set this back on, and then seal it back up so that it will play. And again, we've got to make sure that post, you'll see, I just want to show you so you're clear about this, that little metal post has to line up with those holes. That's why this gets a little bit challenging if, when it, because it's the, 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 again, the tape, it's so brittle. When I was looking at it a second ago, that post, it's kind of the, the hole on this end has a little crack on the side of it and it's not sitting in there very straight. So, hopefully it will line up because usually they should just it should just sit back together without any problem and you know what amazingly enough there you go
What was it they used to say on the A-Team? I love when a plan comes together. Anyway, this amazingly just just worked out, came together there. So, and I, I probably maybe should have pointed this out when we were doing it, but if you look at the the reels inside, it was obviously made with a different different type of plastic than the outside case because those are still white and this is all yellow. So all you do now, now that we've got this together and it's kind of staying together, it's kind of amazing that we got those things to line up the way we did. What we're gonna do is we're just gonna take, it's really this simple. We're gonna take a little bit of scotch tape and we're just going to tape it together like so. Believe it or not, it's all you need to do. And this is gonna work fine. We're just gonna tape this other side. And I'm doing it a little bit lower than I normally would because I we've got that big break right there. I probably could put it a little higher, but no one's ever gonna play this tape again. We just got it just to show you this, what this was like. But anyway, that's that's it. And this tape right here, this is gonna play, This you could put this in any tape deck. Believe it or not, with this, even with these pieces missing, it's nothing's gonna come flying out. The, the way that tape decks, we're gonna do a whole nother video about it, but, but the way tapes work is that the, the the way they do the tension on the on these reels all the time prevents it from falling off and going anywhere. So it'll it that's not a problem. You can have these wide open like this and it'll play just fine. It doesn't look pretty, but then again, there is I think I mean we could just break this to pieces because it's very very brittle. Uh, but uh, anyway, th but so I'll show you right now. This is the this is the side with no tape, that's the side with the tape. I could sit here and spin it. Oh, I'm going the wrong way. And you'll see that it spins, it starts going. No problem. Anyway, that's it. So now you can, uh, John Travolta and, and Livy Newton-John that lives another day, you could listen to Two of a Kind again and and this would work just fine. And so anyway, please like the channel or subscribe to this channel, like the video, share this with anybody. You might know other people that are interested in Louis Newton John, John Travolta, or even in just old analog media and cassette tapes. And, and also, if you have any comments about this stuff, if you saw the movie, or or if you're an Olivia Newton-John fan, or John Travolta, of course, but I, I bring up Olivia Newton-John because it's pretty interesting. We did a video on another channel some time ago about Olivia Newton-John because I have a whole bunch of her records here in our collection. And I was amazed at how many fans she has out in the world. It's shocking. We made this one video. You know, in our videos, we're getting okay traction. We're getting people commenting and watching. And then we made an Olivia Newton-John video. It was like, boom! It was incredible. Anyway. <laughs> She was, she was pretty spectacular. She was something else. Anyway, that's how you do it. All right, hey, with that, have yourself a fantastic day.